or let me know. Okay. Hi, everyone. I'm Priyanka Bakai, and I'm a 2019 YGL. I'm super excited to host this session today with my dear friend, Lisa Gutina, and the brilliant artist, Dina Brodsky. Welcome, ladies. Thank you. Thanks for, thanks for having us, Priyanka. Lisa and I have known each other for over a decade now since our time at MIT Sloan. And in the event of a crisis, Lisa is always my first friend looking to help and step up. I still remember after Hurricane Sandy uh, volunteering together, and she's already organized two successful campaigns for COVID, and she'll be sharing details on our art fundraiser at the end of our segment today. Dina Brodsky is an American contemporary realist, miniaturist, painter, and curator. She is also a social media influencer and has over 380,000 followers on Instagram. Private collectors who own Brodsky paintings include His Royal Highness Prince of Wales, Kip Forbes, Brooke Shields, and Eileen Guggenheim. Um, so needless to say, Dean is kind of a big deal. <laughs> Dina has kept a daily journal practice for about 20 years now, and it's a tool that she uses to process her life and to be centered. And today we're lucky enough to be hearing more from her and getting some tips um, on how we can incorporate these tools into our, our own life. Huge thanks to both of you for joining us today. So first question for Dina. So what does journaling do for you and why should we all think about doing it? Um, you know, journaling, um, so for me, it's basically the most, it's, it's, it's a part of my creative practice that not that many people ever see, but it's also, um, like it's, it's also for me, the most important part, like, you know, in 300 years, um, if all of my paintings, you know, are, are stored up in someone's attics, but someone's still looking at the sketchbooks, I'll, you know, I'll be happy, but it also, it does everything. It clears my head. Um, it kind of, you know, like it basically grounds me and it makes me just more mindful and more aware and more present in the day-to-day -day world. So I'm going to be showing a few of mine. I used to, you know, this one is from, uh, you know, pre, pre COVID days when I was traveling a lot. Um, so, um, I think specifically, um, this is Granada, Spain. Um, and, uh, Uh, so this is this is this is Sevilla. Um, I had a show in London a few years ago and had had a chance to kind of wander around Europe um, a, a little bit. Um, uh, um, so I think this is Oxford. Um, the, um, the, the, the 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 Carfax Tower. So it used to um, and and honestly, so I write a lot when I'm you know, home, or that's, that's the way it used to be. And I would draw a lot when I was traveling because that would be, I mean, it literally be all, all I would do. I would uh, wake up in the morning and have a cup of coffee somewhere. And my idea of travel is so kind of intricately tied up with drawing. Um, the, and right now, obviously there's, you know, no, no more traveling and all of us are, are staying home. So I'm going to be showing you guys one for one, one that I'm kind of working on at the moment, which is just, you know, the, um, the, um, um, basically I am obviously no longer traveling to, to, you know, um, to fancy places. Um, but, uh, it's still something that I end up doing every day and, whether I'm drawing kind of um, one of one of the trees on my street, um, I have a bird atlas that, that, that someone gave me. I have a bunch of old photos. Caesar, I think this is me explaining social distancing to my four-year-old using um, using apples. Um, so, how do you decide what to draw each day? Is there, um, I guess, when you're traveling, it's easy because you can look sort of around for inspiration. But during this time, how do you draw that inspiration? Um, yeah. So when I, when I'm traveling, or even when um, you know, like like even even if I go to a coffee shop, it's whatever is in front of me. It's anything that doesn't move for too long. This is um, this is, is this page. So now it's kind of between. I draw from my head a little bit, but um, it's an avocado I had on my kitchen top, uh, on my on my countertop. Uh, one of the, the the windmill is from an old photograph I had. And the bird is uh, from my, my bird atlas because I've been working on um, a, a series of birds 
from, I don't know how many of you guys have read the Anne Lamott book uh, called, called Bird, Bird by Bird. Um, but it's, you know, it starts with kind of her, her little, her memory of her little brother having to categorize every bird in, in the world. And he's completely overwhelmed. And, you know, he's, he's being, you know, he says, where should I start? And his, his dad says, you know, you just do a bird by bird, buddy. You know, you get through each day and you do bird by bird by bird. And eventually you kind of get them all. So that's kind of what my, um, I, I found that to be a really perfect quarantine project. So, um, so birds kind of inspire me because they just, um, the, um, yeah, I mean, uh, well, for one thing, because I've been drawing them for years, the, um, but for, for another, because it, um, it's kind of like this, this specific time you, you just get through each day best, as best as you can. Mm -hmm. Is there anything in particular um, about the pandemic that journaling has been hit? able to help you with and help crystallize for you as you're sort of processing all the emotions of the pandemic? You know, it, it makes me less, um, so I'm quarantined, um, you know, I'm a single parent, I'm quarantined with my two very small, very demanding children, so I'm simultaneously never alone, um, is a, um, while right. also never really being with, ad with adults, <laughs> so um, is is a, um, uh, like like small kids are very specific and, you know, oh. very delightful in a lot of ways, but um, I, I don't get to be an introvert oh, okay. or an extrovert so um it it keeps me sane it also it helps me feel less claustrophobic because in my sketchbook i can really go you know i can go anywhere uh, um, hello, hello. Uh, um yes. like like and you know i tend to my only time to draw these days is but when i wake up at four and so but when four and six in the morning i i draw and um those drawings could be from any place i visited they could be from any place i've i've imagined they could be anything immediately surrounding me but they also take me out of just a day-to-day -day. like i do a lot of caretaking day-to-day -day and it kind of takes me out of i'm, I'm not only that mm -hmm. No, that's, that's really powerful. Are there times in your life when you've had to process just sort of extreme emotions like grief, anger, depression, um, where the journaling has helped sort of get you through those um, um, difficult moments in life? Um, definitely. But I think I just even, you know, I process the world via these sketchbooks or, or, or these journals. Um, so it, they've, they've helped me in times of extreme emotion, but they've also helped me in times of just needing to kind of, you know, get my head straight because I'm feeling overwhelmed by the day to day. Um, and they've also, you know, I, um, I feel like what I, I barely ever reread them, but I feel like once I've written about something and if once I've drawn it, it's almost like that day is mine. Um, like I've, I've caught something. So a lot of the time I write is actually when I'm really, really happy. Mm -hmm. And right now I, I'm simultaneously in a, in a lot of ways, I'm very happy. And in a lot of ways, I'm completely overwhelmed and I know, and, and anxious and trying to figure out how to work and take care of the little people. And I don't know, and, 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 and not good, not totally lose it. Uh, mm -hmm. so I, um, my writing kind of shifts between like, oh, I'm so lucky I'm quarantined in a safe place. I, you know, everyone's healthy. Uh, I have a large family and none, none of them are sick. Um, so, so from feeling very lucky to feeling like, oh my God, how's, you know, how did I end up here? <laughs> uh, right. But but go, um, go 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 ahead, and I, I can also show you some of my older sketchbooks. I have um, I go through about one one every year. Um, yeah, if there are some of your like favorite journal entries that you'd like to share with us, um, it'd be really great to sort of hear about some of those. This isn't necessarily a favorite, but um, this is what the sketchbook, you know, what my sketchbooks look like. Um, I started them, and I, I barely knew how, you know, I barely knew how to draw. Um, but my, my writing might have been more, more interesting because I was in my early 20s and, you know, had a lot of drama. <laughs> uh, um, but this, um, this is kind of a collage of, I think it was the business cards of just people I'd, I'd meet along, along the way um and things things that they've given me so basically the draw like as as um like as i grow older i feel like the drawings get better um and more intricate and the writing probably gets progressively more boring as my life is kind of less less dramatic so um i think uh and um a professional um what was it yeah um is it um a, a professional torah scribe uh drew the caricature in my book as someone i met in jerusalem many years ago uh, um, um but um yeah um go, go um keep, keep go ahead 
Sure. Um, I mean, I think what would be really helpful for us to see and understand is just like your process of, you know, sitting down because for someone like me, when I sit down with a pen and paper, I end up just sort of coming up with like to-do lists and, you know, I'm very like left-brained and I'm, you know, always sort of putting things into bullet form. So, you know, how do we sort of get out of that zone and, and sort of Get more um, creative. Just, yeah, I, for the record, I have a separate book in which I make my to-do lists. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but but um, the, um, I, I, I somehow don't have it in this pile. But <laughs> um, but um, I think you just start. Is it's the easiest thing really is to start with whatever is in front of you. And I, I don't know if you're still kind of walking around outside, but just picking up a few leaves and twigs and just trying to kind of you know like like so, so for me a lot of what it does is. It, it gets me out of my own head, which is kind of paradoxic because I'm, it's, it's almost like, um, I, I don't know if you've read to Harry Potter, but the pensive, like if, if you have too many thoughts and you can just kind of dump them all out into, in, into a place and store them there. But um, the, as far as drawing goes, um, you start with, um, like, like don't put too much pressure on yourself. Um, the, it doesn't have to be good. No, no specific page actually has to look good. Um, uh, and altogether, if you keep going, it, it, it still winds up being kind of a beautiful object. So I, I actually remember when I started journaling. Um, actually, actually, I think I started keeping diaries when I was 12 um, is that because I, I had an assignment to write. Uh, write my own autobiography and I just never stopped the assignment was like three weeks and you know, the, uh, the, um, and those those are really embarrassing I still have those um, but when I was 18 I ended up at university and I started drawing and I fell in love with it but I also wasn't very good at it like it was just you know it was it was like a crush you have on someone who's not not necessarily <laughs> reciproc reciprocating <laughs> uh, where where I knew that this was what I wanted to do you know, every day for the rest of my life while simultaneously not being good at the things that I wanted to do every day for the rest. So, so, so basically like just, you know, meeting someone be like, oh, this is a person I want to marry. Uh, but then, you know, uh, but then that person wants nothing to do with you. So that was kind of how art was for me for a long time. The, um, and I remember one weekend of just feeling particularly j just felt like like nothing I was doing in any of my classes was was coming at, you know, like, like, like basically I, sucked and I kept trying you know I kept trying I was like oh maybe the charcoal drawing will work and you know like maybe the sculpture will work and um and nothing nothing did it's was, it was just all kind of a disaster and I was talking to the model from one of my classes and she said here why don't you t just take the sketchbook and she had this little black book and she was like how about for the weekend instead of sitting here in the art studios trying to make things you know work out just draw whatever's in front of you and you know if nothing looks good it's just a sketchbook so I did that and within a day I kind of felt and, and she was right nothing in that book looked good uh, but there was less pressure to make I think that I think so many of us in adult life feel the pressure to just make finished things all the time mm -hmm. whether it's like a finished thought or a finished you know the like some sort of finished product and a sketchbook is just a place where you can kind of be be yourself the... no I, I love that are there days when you just don't feel like journaling and you just sort of have to push yourself to do it or is it always just something that you look forward to every day um right now there aren't you know um so right now i just look forward to it every day because it's really the only thing that i kind of have have for myself uh usually but i've, I've had moments when i don't draw for like a few weeks and and just like anything else it's a muscle so mm -hmm. it kind of atrophies if you don't don't use it uh, so every time I restart, like if I if I don't draw for a few weeks, um, there's a reluctance because I know that the first things that I do, you know, the first drawing after you get back into it isn't going to be that great. Uh, but then you kind of push through it and within, you know, like like it's also like a muscle, you get to kind of re-engage it. And mm -hmm. once you start using it, uh, you kind of get back to get back to yourself. Yeah. yeah. How do you decide, like sometimes you're writing, sometimes you're drawing, is it? Do you sort of decide like one day I'm going to do this, one day I'm going to do that, or is it just you sort of um, see? You, you know, so, so I um, I write when I feel like I um, so I write when I feel like I need to kind of cl just clear clear my head of thoughts um, and sort out what's you know what's what's going on, and I draw just because I'm happy. Like I I, I love doing it. Mm -hmm. So I really I draw, I draw for no 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 reason at all. Yeah. 
Yeah, no, I love how you sort of described it as um, it's sort of like a stream of consciousness for you. So it's you're just sort of like in the zone when you're doing that. Um, pretty, pr- pretty, pretty much. I mean, the, the writing is. Um, I, I've tried rereading it both years later and sometimes months later, and usually I'm very embarrassed at what I wrote uh, because it's simultaneously me trying to sort through m- my own head, but but also I'm like, really, God, that's what I was so upset about five years ago. What's wrong, what's wrong with me? <laughs> like, um, like, like I should have gotten my sh- my shit together. <laughs> Um, but, but yeah, as, as a, it, like the writing isn't necess- isn't connected to the images. I tend to draw first and then write, you know, days or weeks or months later, like right, right now, my, I've been drawing a lot and, um, and honestly, not that much has been happening in my life other than just taking care of my kids and trying to meet work deadlines. So I haven't really been writing much, much at all. And mm-hmm. when I do, it's just sort of like, well, the same thing happened today as, <laughs> as, as, as yesterday. And I'm happy that it's not worse. Uh, but but I draw a lot, so I, I, I'm probably going to be the writing for that the part of the book that I just um, just finished isn't going to happen until probably you know September. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, so let me. Um, so and this is actually specifically something that I've, I I don't know if you'll be able to see it well, but my 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 quarantine book has just been. Uh, I've literally I'm I'm obviously a very literal person, so I actually made a bird by bird book. Uh, and it's um, um, these tiny little gouache paintings, uh, um, and it takes kind of a few a few days to get get through. You know, a few baby mm-hmm. nap times and uh, you know six six a.m. sessions. Uh, but so my 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 four year old son asked me to draw draw cardinal, and um, I think my um, our uh, mine and Lisa's mutual friend Mal asked asked me to do a canary. Um, and that's, um, actually that's, uh, Tan, the guy that did the fundraiser website. Uh, so, so I've kind of been uh, just asking people, people I know for, you know, the, what, what their favorite bird is and kind of catching it for them as a spirit, sort of spirit animal. At least I should do yours. So, so I, I, um, but, um, so yeah, this is, this is my bird by bird quarantine book. Um, and I feel like it got so, and I'm not going to write in this um i just feel like i'm so not in control over most of my day spent with small kids and so these are these kind of tiny like like very tightly controlled paintings that i make because it's probably the only part of my my life where i actually feel like i'm in control <laughs> mm-hmm. no these, these are stunning are there ever times when you um you know take something you've sketched and then make a painting that you later sell from from that sketch or do you really try to keep the two separate no no i i definitely i mean so is there when i'm doing them a lot of them are supposed to be sketches for bigger paintings but most of them most of them don't really turn into anything but itself yeah and i think it's probably nice for you to have that distinction of um you know being able to keep your career separate from this hobby of yours as well um, are there any tips you have um, for people just wanting to start this for the first time who might be very daunted by the idea of, um, you know, drawing something for the first time? You know, is there is there some tips for sort of easing yourself um, in and motivating yourself? Um, just put an apple in front. Okay. Yes, for instance, get a sketchbook that you like. Like if, you, if, you, if you're serious about it, um, get, you know, get something where, which feels good in your hands and that kind of you want to spend a lot of time with, like, don't get one of these crappy, you know, kind of big spiral bound things. Um, just get, get an object that you want to carry around um, and get a zebra pen. This is, um, it's, they sell them at Staples or on Amazon. They're not very fancy, but I, I, I feel like they totally, it's just a nice ballpoint pen, um, but it's, kind of just refined enough where it gives you a lot of control, but also, like, you know, like it's just a ballpoint pen, so there's no pressure. Uh, and just put an apple in front of yourself and draw that. And then the next, you know, and it could take you 15 minutes or five minutes. And then the next day, I don't know, put a pair in front of yourself and your drawings will, you'll get better. And the, like, like, like basically through the course of just that one book, you'll get better. The drawings will get better and it'll actually make you think about life in a different way. Like mm-hmm. even just a very, very simple objects to surround you. No, that, that's beautiful. I think I'm going to try it. Um, I, I especially like the idea of, around just nature because there's just so much beauty. And I think especially during this time when, you know, we can't go 
um, you know, outside that much beyond just like our sort of close like gardens, etc. It's just it's a really nice idea to go out in nature, pick up a leaf, and there's so much detail just in one leaf that you can draw, and that you know you don't notice the beauty of that if you don't like actually really like focus on it. So, I think I'm going to. I think you inspired me to try it. Do do, do exactly that. I'll just pick up a leaf. Uh, uh, um, Maybe maybe that'll be the, you know, maybe that'll be my next project. I I was actually, I've been out of New York for the first, you know, the the first springtime since I was probably about 17. Uh, And um, it's actually so beautiful when you're, I mean, New York's fine too, uh, but the, um, the, um, it's actually really nice not being surrounded by, you know, big cement buildings all the time. Yeah. No, thank you so much. Um, So I guess we're almost um, getting to the end of the segment. So I wanted to switch gears to let Lisa tell us um, a bit more about the art fundraiser, which also features some of uh, Dina's art in it um, and is for a really great cause. So Lisa, take it away. Hi, everyone. I'm going to share the screen um, right now. Uh, hopefully, um, we can, if we can share the screen, <laughs> hey, the technical support. <laughs> um, so I'm going to show, I'm going to speak, I'm going to show some of the paintings uh, in the online show that Dean and I and a few other friends put together. It's an online show uh, and an exhibit and fundraiser. Uh, that supports both the artists that are exhibiting the show and the uh, um, the cause uh, that uh, I've been part of in the past couple of months. So this particular painting is actually Dina's painting. I wanted to start with that. Um, the whole uh, exhibit is called Trees of Life. Um, and it's all like features beautiful paintings of trees. And this one of Dina's is actually a soul. <laughs> But uh, what I wanted to say is that um, this program that we are participating in is called Finding Beauty in Quarantine Times. And what I found uh, for me that I've been able to find beauty in these times in helping others, uh, but also in partnering with friends to do so. And uh, so I live in Brooklyn, (laughs) and my brother is a doctor in a local hospital. And so by virtue of that, I kind of had a front seat to... um, the pandemic, as it started in New York a couple, couple months ago, and my brother got sick, uh, luckily not too bad, and recovered in a few weeks. But uh, because he got sick and because of lack of protective equipment that his hospital and he himself experienced, I wanted to, as like I think a lot of people uh, in New York and across the U.S., I wanted to step in and do something. And so I found uh, some other like-minded people who... Um, wanted to raise some funds and to procure some masks and some other protective equipment to give to doctors across Northeast. And then that's how the uh, masks for doctors were born. And I'm going to show you another, uh, another painting. Another painting in the exhibit that I really like uh, by Jessica Pisano. And she's an artist from Martha's Vineyard. You can zoom, I mean, you continue just mostly showing the, uh, the screen. Um, and so, yeah, so the uh, the mass productors were originally an initiative started by a few people uh, from New York, New Jersey, Boston, and uh, Maryland, a few other, uh, and actually California as well. And we started a fundraiser online and were able to raise some funds and started to procure the PPE. So I feel like a lot of other people across uh, across the U.S. Uh, as hospitals were experiencing and states were experiencing a lot of problems um, buying masks. And uh, we originally were um, helping the doctors in hospitals, and then we moved on to the more underprotected and essential medical staff in clinics, private practices, nursing homes, uh, and AMTs. 
And we are 100% volunteer run organization. We are also partnered with a local nonprofit um, to make um, the larger donations um, tax deductible. And so when I was thinking of creative ways of how can raise funds to generate awareness about this, I called Dina, who I know for almost 20 years at this point, and we came up with the idea of having an online exhibit and the fundraiser that both gives away for artists to exhibit their art now that a lot of museums and the uh, um, galleries that close and sell art, but also gives everyone an opportunity to contribute to a larger cause. So that 50% of the uh, proceeds go to the artists and 50% goes to the mass productors. And we've been able to launch the exhibit um, about a week, exactly a week ago. And I've been uh, able to sell a few paintings already. Uh, and I encourage everyone to really you know, again, now most of the all, all museums and, and, and galleries are closed. We cannot go and do that. Like New Yorkers, you know, we're really allowed to do that. But we can also just go online, see those beautiful works of art. Um, but also if we can and we have the financial ability, uh, contribute to the cause and buy some of those things. I don't know, if, Dina, if you want to say anything, uh, you'll get such a huge part of this. And I'm going to share in the meantime another uh, another image from the show. Um, yeah, so this is, this is actually kind of my dream, my, my dream show. I've been trying to have this uh, tree show in a, in a gallery for probably years. And what every gallery has told me is, um, yeah, God, what a, what, what a, what a beautiful show, um, is a, maybe next year. Uh, um, and then finally, when, when Lisa called me, um, I was like, well, this show has been, um, this, this, this show has been kind of infinitely delayed, um, and, you know, I've, um, pretty much every place I've suggested it to, uh, let's, let's just do this right now. And, uh, it, it did. So Lisa, thank you for kind of, uh, you were the catalyst. Um, and it kind of made, um, these are all the people whose work I would buy if I had the means. Uh, um, it's just kind of my, it's, it's my, my perfect tree show. <laughs> um, okay. the, yeah, also, I mean, I think we're almost out of time. So I would like, again, um, I would encourage everyone to visit the show. Uh, it's called Trees of Life. Um, and the the gallery that Dina runs and the online <laughs> um, medium that she runs is called The Blue Review. So if you go there, if you Google us, uh, you'll be able to um, to find it. And please like, go have a look. There's 12 amazing artists uh each have about three paintings uh that you can actually see and you know buy if you could great well thank you guys so much um for sharing both this amazing fundraiser as well as the art and process behind um, your work dina this has been a real treat and um really encourage people to go online um, and check out that fundraiser. Um, and hopefully this has inspired you all as it's inspired me to think about um, spending a few minutes at least each day um, on um, journaling, whether it's through starting to draw something or writing out our thoughts. I think there's um, a lot of benefit that that can have for all of us right now, um, given everything that's going on in the external world. This is a really good time to really take a step back and explore our inner world too. So um, thank you so much again, ladies, and um, I hope everyone enjoys the rest of um, the show after us as well. Uh, God, thank you. Thank you so much for, you know, it's, it's thrilled to be here. Uh, and, uh, have, have a good evening, everyone. Uh, thank you and stay safe, everyone. Uh, bye. Bye. bye.